Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu, and I'm with the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department here at Dunwoody. Today we're going to learn about sine waves and AC circuits. Number one priority of an AC circuit is the fact that um, we can transform that voltage as it travels from pole to pole. Downside of a DC circuit, which everyone's learned up until this point, is the fact that you cannot change the voltage, it stays the same. So if I have to have 480 volts at a house, I would have to carry that 480 volts for miles and miles and miles, which wouldn't be real conducive to a good voltage when I got it there. So we changed to AC. Thomas Edison discovered the fact of AC back in the 1800s and produced the first power plant back in 1883 in New York City. AC is based upon the fact of a rotating machine. The number one reason why we want to use AC voltage is the fact that we can transform that voltage. So that 480 volts I need at my building, I can actually run 10,000 volts all the way up until I get to that building. All right, so the greatest advantage of AC is that transformation. One of the key things we do in this building is we have 9,000 volts out on the pole coming into a transformer at the back of the building. From that transformer, we transform down to 480 volts. That 480 volts is used for all our air conditioning equipment, all our heating and air conditioning. It can be used for our motors in the motors lab. And then we bring it down again to 277 to feed all the lighting in the building. From that point, we transform again down to 120, which is used to feed your laptops. So that is the reason we use that AC voltage in this, in this um, day and age. It's much quicker, much less expensive, more efficient. I can use smaller wires. So it does well for us out, out there in the real world. Now the way AC works is that it is actually based upon the fact of rotating machines. So I have a basic single alternator here. And what it shows me is we've so far learned about magnetism. So you have your north pole, your south pole. Between these magnets are flux lines. As those flux lines flow from north to south, and we move a coil of wire through it or a single wire through that, we cut those lines of flux. By cutting those lines of flux, we are actually creating a sine wave. Sine wave is the main waveform of AC current. Now alternating current, or AC, is the fact that we have one waveform that's going to be in a positive and then it's going to alternate into that negative direction. How it all works is you actually have, if I can get this open, is you actually have a trig triangle here. And based on trig, we have a 0, a 90, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and back up to 0 or 360 degrees. Based upon our sine wave, we start here, and we're not cutting any of those lines of flux. Those lines of flux are traveling from north to south. So right now, our wire would be parallel with those lines of flux. As we begin our rotation, just as we would with our AC sine wave, we start heading up, 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 as we cut those lines of flux. Right about here, we're at a 45 degree angle. So at this point on our sine wave, we'd be sitting at about a 45 degree angle, or right about there at our sine wave. As we continue to cut those lines of flux, head up, head up, head up, head up, head up, we eventually hit that 90 degree mark. As we hit that 90 degree mark, as you can see, we are cutting every single line of flux. Therefore, at 90 degrees, my voltage is at its maximum or peak point. As we continue back through, this is continually rotating. So as it is rotating through, it's going to keep rotating, rotating, rotating until it hits that zero mark again. And when it hits that zero mark, we are no longer cutting any lines of flux, so therefore we are not able to induce any voltage. As we continue to flow through, now we're going into the negative spectrum or cutting lines of flux. So now we've begun to alternate and go into a negative polarity. 
So as we head back down from 180, continue down through up to 270, once again we are cutting all those lines of flux as they are perpendicular to it. And as they cut those lines of flux, we are now in a negative peak on my sine wave. As we continue rotating through, we come back through, cutting lines and cutting fewer and fewer and fewer flux lines until we get to that zero point. When we hit that zero point, we are no longer cutting any lines of flux, and we are no longer creating any voltage or inducing a voltage. That is the basics of a sine wave and that alternation that occurs. So for instance, if I was to look at this, let me do a little better circle here. I would know that as I'm going, I'm going to mark these points being one, two, three, four, and five. As I look at my round quarters for my trig or quarters, I would look at this would be first, here's second, third, fourth, and back up to one or five. So I follow through with my finger, I'm able to actually see that rotation as we rotate through. Once we hit that second point, we are peaked at 90 degrees. Coming back down, we hit our third point back to zero or 180 degrees, flow back through, down, so we peak again at 270, and then return back to our fifth point, which is back down to zero, not cutting any lines of flux, not inducing any kind of a voltage.